Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final episode of Transformers Cyberverse Season 1. Or Chapter 1, whatever it's called. Episode 18 of the first group of episodes of Transformers Cyberverse. It's called Eruption. It's the finale. It's going to be awesome. Hopefully. (laughs) I mean, um... And we've been getting a fair amount of action in these episodes, but nothing overly spectacular, I don't want to say. Um, like, I, I've, I've seen... I, I've seen cooler stuff all around. <laughs> um, but it, it's been a fun ride, and I'll talk about the season as a whole after we watch this episode. Um... But before we watch this episode, uh, speculate... Well, last time, we saw... uh, What did we see? We saw them figure out the location of the Ark, and uh, the Decepticons... Well, Shockwave was spying on them, and so they all went out and tried to get to the Ark, and the Autobots got there, but on the way, they were attacked by the Decepticons, and the Seekers, rather, um... And we also learned that Shockwave is pursuing his own plans and uh, um, separate from Starscream and possibly Megatron as well. Uh, So hopefully we'll find out what that's all about this episode. If not, then it's up to next episode. And I'm not really sure I want to wait for whenever Season 2 drops to find that out. Um, Because that would remind me way too much of the... uh, the DC Titans series, where, like, the entire first season kind of felt like, um... Well, like, the the first season finale felt more like a mid-season finale, where, like, they ended on this huge cliffhanger, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, check in in, like, a year's time for the next season. And it's just like, I liked it, but I want to know what happens next right now, because you're just kind of leaving off in the middle of the story. And so, if all that happens in this specific episode is that the Autobots wake up, then it's like, well, what, what, what's going on with Shockwave and Starscream and Megatron? And, like, what's what's the plot here, you know? Like, I, I get it. I get what they're going for. But at the same time, eh, not, not, not great. Um, and I, I brought this up last time, but... We have the entire Decepticon Armada coming, and it seems like, you know, they have to wake up the Autobots um, on board the Ark in order to stand a fighting chance. But if they wake up all of them, that would be just a little bit too much, in my opinion. So I'm thinking that something will happen that will, you know, stop that from happening. Um, And my most likely guess... Well, I mean, the title of this episode is Eruption. So my guess is the mountain that they're under, the volcano, rather, that they're under, is going to explode, and, you know, uh, half of the ARC crew, at least, is going to be trapped underneath there, but our main characters are going to uh, have escaped. And so we'll get some of the Autobots out, but not all of them. Only the ones that, like, we've seen so far. Like, we'll get out Wheeljack and Chromia and RC and Optimus and all of the rest that we've seen that have been, you know, semi-important. But the rest are just going to stay locked underground for a while. That would be my guess. Um, If that's what actually is going to happen, I don't know, but we won't find out until we watch the episode. So, let's watch the episode. And we will get started in 3, 2, 1, play. Woo! We finally found it. Yep. No, waste no time and wake everybody up. Oh, we're seeing this from the drone's perspective this time. Nice. Thank you for locating the Ark for us. Uh, okay, that was fast of them to arrive. <laughs> I love those little drones. They're so cute. Optimus Prime and the Autobots inside will now all be destroyed. Uh, ambitious, aren't you, Soundwave? 
Decepticons, attack. Oh, okay, Shockwave finally transformed. That's pretty cool. I mean... <laughs> this is not gonna end well, I don't think. Um, for the Autobots, like, it doesn't seem like it will. Um, doesn't seem like it could, rather. Because, like, there's so many of them. Um, but, we'll see. The eye. Oh, damn. <laughs> Just stinger her already. <laughs> Ow. Oh, damn. So apparently energy swords like that are common. Yeah, that's... Grimlock's gonna stand the best chance against our groups. <laughs> Did Daddy change the code? Eh. Eh. Drone versus drone. <laughs> I'm not sure which one I want to win. The cute one or the one that's actually on the good guy's side. <laughs> oh. Sucks to be you, Acid Storm. <laughs> Spider on my face! Spider on my face! And stinger her. B, get into the arc. Wake up Optimus. Yeah, that's pretty much the only way you're gonna stand a chance at this point. Shockwave needs to get taken care of. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nice little, uh, oh crap moment from him. Seekers, fire. Oh, that, those are two new ones. They look cool. Nicely done, Grimlock. Shadow Striker, keep them busy. Oh. What's he up to? He's gonna cause the volcano to erupt. Hmm. Well, they managed to get inside. This way, make a left. He can't remember how to navigate it, of course. So he needs to have Teltron X guide him. There they all are. Time to wake him up. Oh. What is it? What's going on? Teltron One is gone. Damaged beyond repair. We're toast, man. It's okay. I will reboot the system using my own processor. Does that mean that you're gonna be gone? Probably. Don't be upset, Bumblebee. This is exactly what I was programmed to do. Aww. I consider it a joy to complete my. Now it's just us. I will destroy you. No, you won't. We keep ending up like this, but don't worry. This time, it really is the end. Eh, not yet. <laughs> Your little pea shooter can't do much. Didn't see that coming, did ya? Ow. <laughs> she is, yeah, she's vicious. Then like save bomb me again. <laughs> Keep her distracted, Grimlock. Oh, he's bringing in the ship. Okay. But he's gonna use it to cause interruption. Report your status. The Autobot ship is about to be destroyed in a volcanic eruption. By the time okay. you land, there will be no Autobots left on this planet. I should certainly hope so. You don't have much time left. <laughs> oh. Oh. Nice. I love that design for the nemesis. That is so cool. Okay. Oh. Seekers. Let's finish her. 
Might want to save yourself, though. Well, that'll look cool. <laughs> there. Oh, dear. Steve, whatever you're doing in there, do it fast. Looks like this volcano is going to blow. I'm trying, but... Our good friend is gone. Trend X is gone? What? No. We must abandon the Ark for now. Please, get out of there. No, you need Optimus. At least Optimus. Hey, hey, hey. I'm back. Beltron 1. Okay. Just took a little while to reboot. Crew member Bumblebee, I did it. I've taken over the ship, or oh. I will. I've never had to control so many subsystems. Oops, there go the lights. Eh. Start by waking up Optimus, please. Hey, now we can look outside. They need backup, now! Yeah, start by waking up Optimus. That would make the most sense. Oh, okay. Going for a be a bit of a Beast Wars uh, way of doing it here. <laughs> yeah, I remember that happening all the time in Beast Wars. Every time the Predacons seemed like they had outnumbered the Autobots, they just retreated inside the base and activated the weapon systems. And the Axelon's uh, weapons were more than enough to uh, drive them off. That guy has a really cool design. Who is he? I don't know. Yeah, get inside at least. Retreat. It looks as if it's about time to get inside. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much your only option at this point. You're not gonna make it outside, so. Sorry, activating climate control. Nope, that's fire suppression. Didn't mean to do that. I mean, you might need fire suppression with the lava. <laughs> Initiated. Oh, and directional thrusters. Oh, they're gonna fly? That'll be new. The Autobots have never really had a flying uh, <laughs> base before. Well, there goes the eruption. Well, they have kind of had a flying base in uh, Transformers Animated, right? Sort of. It was always at the bottom of the lake. I'll try everything. Hmm. What the hell? <laughs> Appropriate enough music for this chaos. There should be a lot more smoke and whatnot for the the shielding. Yes, I think we are. Activate the shielding. Okay, so they're not going to be able to fly out of there. But they're going to be. Yay! I saved us all. Yes! Oh, and I have a happy update. Wake up sequence is complete. How many Autobots are we getting here? All of them, huh? Hmm. Well. Grimlock. Windblade. Bumble. Hey! It is so good to see you. <laughs> and so here we are, my friends. Reunited well, there's Prowl and RC. Lost in time and lost in... Welcome back, crew. And sorry about this, but warning! A Decepticon fleet is headed... Yeah! You're kind of screwed. <laughs> oh! Has he ever put up his battle mask before? I don't know if he has. Okay. Autobots, roll out. Okay, that's a nice note to end on. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was that was fun. I guess. No answers, but whatever. 
Uh, it'll, it's bound to happen eventually. We'll get a season two, and we'll get hopefully some answers. So yeah, um, so Teltron 1 is dead, but Teltron X has taken over, which is kind of interesting. I kind of would have liked it if he'd managed to get the ship flying, and that way the Autobots could have had the, uh, the flying base warship um, for a change. Because, like, that, that's kind of become a thing that the Decepticons just have going on for the most part in, like, a lot of different series. Like, all too often, the Decepticons are the ones who are mobile and able to, you know, just go anywhere, while the Autobots are just stuck in one place and they have to rely on their vehicle forms or uh, a teleportation device in order to get places. And that, yeah, that limits the heroes, and which is okay and good, but, like, in this series, it kind of seems like it would be nice, you know, to have the Autobots be a little bit less limited in that sense, and more limited in the sense of fewer numbers. Um, so, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll just see how it goes um, when we get to Season 2. Uh, so, they kind of dropped in this one the idea of Shockwave being off on his own, because Starscream just kind of seemed like he expected Shockwave to be there. Or maybe it was a case of, like, just the phrasing, and the general idea was that Shockwave's not supposed to be there, and he has until the rest of the Decepticon Armada arrives in order to basically, you know, prove that his time on Earth was worth it. Um, His disobeying Starscream and Megatron was worth uh, the effort. You know, if he destroys the Autobot ship, then the Decepticons are going to be able to just walk right over the planet and do whatever the hell they want. Um, but, you know, Shockwave failed, so hopefully in the next season he gets his, uh, he gets a talking to from Megatron. Um, so yeah, uh, I do like that overall, like, I don't know, like, I like the fighting in this series to a point. Um, I do love that occasionally the characters show off a bit of ingenuity in terms of how they do things. But just with the sheer number of Decepticons that were there, you know, all of the Seekers plus Shockwave plus Shockwave's drones in, you know, we just had three Autobots and Teletron X, that was not a fight that they should have walked away from. The Autobots should have died there if we were thinking, like, logically. Plus, on a grander scale, when, like, if if you were an outsider looking at the battlefield and the way that things were working out... There were just a lot of moments where it was like, well, why is why isn't other characters interfering with this character fighting this individual character? Like, why why are they able to have one on one fights when they should be getting swarmed by enemies? Because there's like twelve different seekers, so it, it it doesn't really work out logically in that sense. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you can work it out that it does. Like, like it, it should have been possible for them to work it out that it does. I just, I don't think that they necessarily have the best action choreographer working on this show. And hopefully that is an area that they improve on in season two. Um, If they could get someone to come in and just, you know, work out in a sort of three-dimensional space. Like, okay, here is where all of the fight scenes are going down. Here's where all the characters are. Here's what they're doing at any given moment. And then we just, you know, pick and choose. Like, here's the angle that we want and here's the characters that we want to focus on. That's... You know, like, like, think of it like, uh, like, the airport fight in Civil War. You have so many characters in that fight, but you can pretty much tell where everybody is and where what everybody's doing, and there's never a moment where you feel like, oh, well, this shouldn't be possible because, you know, they should be getting attacked by other characters. No. Um, what, what what's going on is you actually see, uh, what am I trying to say here? Like... Whenever you focus in on one pair of characters, in the background you can see the other characters doing things. And there's there's stuff like that going on all throughout the fight, and it's it's a great fight. Um, and, you know, similar stuff happens all the time in, like, the Arrowverse shows. Um, especially, like, one of the best ones, uh, last year's crossover, 
uh, Crisis on Earth X. In the first episode, they had a fight in a church <laughs> because it was an interrupted wedding. Um, that was all of the you know Nazi versions of the characters going up against the heroes. And during that fight, we saw so much happening. But it was always clear what the characters were doing, where they were, and like never at any point in the fight were we like, oh, well, this character should be doing something else, or you know, th- this these characters should be in trouble because you know there should be they should be getting swarmed by enemies. It was a good, well choreographed fight that worked out quite well, and Cyberverse has just been struggling with that a little bit. Um, I've noticed it in. Uh, well, in mostly in the last few episodes, um, it's just it, it it's really stood out to me uh, that for as m- <sighs> the action looks good, but when you actually stop to think about it, it doesn't work logically, and I I just want them to change that up, especially because now that we've got an entire army of Decepticons. And the number of Autobots that seem to have woken up is far less than the number of pods that I saw. Although, I did catch a glimpse of a single generic off to the side, which, again, it kind of looked like Trailbreaker, but I don't think it was, because it was just the same model generic as all the other ones that we've seen. So, yeah. Um, it, 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 It was colored like Trailbreaker, but it was just a generic. Um, so hopefully, you know, there's more Autobots that will be able to join in with the fight. I don't know how this is going to go down when Season 2 gets here. Um, in all honesty, though, well, if I'm being honest, um, I want to see Season 2 very shortly, but I'm not super excited by the ending of this season, this, uh, this chapter here. Um, so yeah, just stepping back and looking at it overall, we've had 18 episodes, and my favorites are still basically the segment from Megatron is my hero up to Mechanums. That's, that five group, five episode group right there is my favorite part of the series. Um, looking at just all the rest of these, um... Yeah, like, the premiere was kind of meh. Uh, episode 3 was alright. Episode 4 was probably probably one of my least favorites of the entire series. Um, episode 5 had a lot of action, but not much plot progression. And it felt ultimately kind of pointless. And it was just, like... It, it was a very weird... Um, just a very weird episode. Um, especially because now that we've we've firmly established that you know the Autobots crashed on Earth, you know, very long time ago, that episode implied that Bumblebee crashed recently, so it kind of very much raises some questions. Um, episode eleven sabotage was the one where Shockwave went into Bumblebee's head, and that one was pretty weird. Um, Bumblebee should have been a little bit smarter in that one all around. Uh, the episode where we got introduced to Teletron X, that one was also a little bit weird. Not my favorite episode. Um, heck, the next one, Matrix of Leadership. Also, apparently a lot of people really like that one. Um, apparently it's got some references to things that I don't really remember. But overall, it felt... It just felt a little bit weird to me. Um, Because, like, I'm used to, like, in... What was it? Fall of Cybertron, War of Cybertron games, where Optimus goes on an epic journey to the core in order to get the Matrix of Leadership and earns it. He really earns that title of being Optimus Prime. Um, But here, it, it, it just doesn't seem like he did anything to earn it before he got it. Like, if they'd shown us the clip of Optimus saving Prowl before they showed us the clip of him getting the Matrix, I would have been completely on board. That would have been perfect. But they didn't do that. So it comes across a little bit weird. 
And then episode 14 with Siloed. Um, God, that one's probably my next least favorite after episode 5. Uh, just because it doesn't seem like Windblade should have been able to, you know, do that. She shouldn't have been able to escape like that. Just all around it, that one was a weird episode. And then the rest of them, you know, King of the Dinosaurs was pretty fun. We got Grimlock introduced. And aside from that one dumb bit of how did they, you know, wake him up, it was all around a pretty good episode. And surprisingly emotional, too. And then the Extinction Event and Awakened Sleeping Giants felt very fillery and not all that important or interesting. Um, Just... All around, this season could have been done a lot better. Because even, even like, that stretch of them that it's, like, those are my favorite episodes. Like, even that stretch just doesn't really fit in very well with the flow and the pacing. Each episode on its own individually, for the most part, is fun. But looking at it and just, like, looking at, like, how the season is paced and how things are done in this season... Not my favorite. It it could be done a whole heck of a lot better. And if I were to sit down and, you know, really think about it, I could probably come up with, you know, how I would do it and, like, keep all the same concepts, all the same stuff, but maybe do it just a little bit differently, do it in a way that, you know, makes a little bit more sense. And if I'm honest, um... Just in general, like with episode four, Journey there, um, they were fighting those stupid bug things that suck Energon. I'll be honest, that one's also probably one of my bottom episodes of the season, simply because bugs versus, you know, sentient robot characters, they, they should have been able to damage the bugs a lot. Instead of going with a few big bugs, I would have gone with swarms of smaller bugs and show the Autobots actually, you know, stomping them and slicing them. And because they're just bugs, yeah, they're living creatures, but they're just bugs. Don't don't try and romanticize them and make it so like, oh, the life of every creature like that. You know, they didn't show any signs of like sapience or anything. So why? Why could the Autobots not, like, rip them in half, basically? You don't have to go full gore fest with it and show, like, blood splatter and everything, but just, you know, just show Optimus chopping one of the bugs in half with his axe. That's all I was asking for, and they didn't do that. Show Grimlock stomping one of them flat and turning it into goo. That's all I'm asking for. They didn't do it. And, you know, stuff like that just continues on throughout here, like... I get the animation isn't... Maybe it's not that easy to do, but they they should show more battle damage and stuff like that in general. And if I'm honest, uh, just the other day, well, yesterday, in fact, I rewatched the original G1 movie. And between that, Transformers Prime, and heck, even R.I.D. a little bit, I just have certain expectations for a Transformers show... And while this meets a lot of them, it doesn't meet others. So, on the whole, this this has been a decent season, but not that great. Um, yeah. I mean, heck, another comparison of another thing I just recently watched. I recently watched Venom for the first time, and that was fun. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't good. And I kind of had the same feeling here. It's fun, it's enjoyable to watch, but it's not that great. It's not a it's not a good series in the sense of like like you you point at Transformers Prime and it's like it's got the plot, it's got the characters, it's got the music, it's got the animation, everything is great there. And then you look at this one and it's like, yeah, it's got some of that sort of, but not Nowhere near the same degree. So, I'd put it above... I'd put it above the entire Unicron trilogy. And, like, all of the Japanese dubbed things. Um, 
like the things that were dubbed from Japan. Like, yeah, your headmasters, your Transformers Victory, which I haven't really watched. Okay, maybe I don't won't put it above that. So, because I, I don't really know that much about Transformers Victory. Supposedly, it's actually pretty cool. So I, I'm I'm not I'm gonna leave it leave that one out of it. Um, but I'd, I'd put it above. Yeah, probably the headmasters dub and the 2001 RID dub and all the Unicron trilogy stuff. But it doesn't quite live up to Prime or, uh, like, what, what, what am I thinking of? Or animated. Um, it is above R.I.D., though. R.I.D. didn't really have a whole lot of, like, it, it relied too much on a status quo. In this one, the status quo keeps changing, which I like. You know, your characters start out, you know, they're in the Decepticon ship that they stole, and then eventually, you know, that, that ship gets, you know, taken away from them, and so they have to kind of go on the run, and then they find Grimlock, and he shows them his, you know, little mini base, and they're there for a l- little while, and then they find the Ark. So, you know, there's the the, the status quo throughout the se- first season has kept changing, and... I, I do like that because you know, it it, uh, it it keeps it from being it keeps it from being boring. I want to say, but like that's not even it. Like the show is never really boring. It's just it's not as good as it could be, and that's a little bit frustrating. That's always a little bit frustrating. <sighs> So, mini rant there about this series overall. Um, this episode, though, Eruption, was fun, was good. One, probably one of the better ones. Um, and, like I said, I do want to look... I do want to watch the next season, but I'm not, like, excited for it. In the same way I am a lot of other things that are eventually going to be coming back. Uh, but, yeah. When the next season arrives, I will be reacting to it, and uh, I hope to see you all there. Until then, JT Vector Sigma, signing off.